Because mm-hmm. sometimes, like, there's a time I went, and me, I was like, me, I knew we were going to talk about, like, my marriage. But then you say something, and they're like, um, you just said that uh, you, you know for a fact that this is this. How do you know that for a fact? And then now, you so your dad. Going, in this, <laughs> your dad. You did and this. now you're walking in the complete, like, therapy by the way can really open your eyes up to the most problematic things. Hi, guys. Murugi Muni here. It's Lydia KM. And we're back again with another episode of The Messy In Between. It's, it's definitely, definitely TMI. TMI. Shouting it like you usually are. Funny Why enough, I was actually about to say. I'm shouting. I no, I don't know oh. if it's this dress. Oh God, please, <laughs> please, please. Yeah, she's like it's definitely TMI. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Which this podcast are you on? <laughs> Look at the way I'm holding my chest. Oh my. <laughs> no, I don't know if it's this dress. I don't know if it's the pinky. I don't the mid know part. What it is. It's the, mid, the part. mid part. I'm just feeling a bit more. <laughs> Feminine. Are they fem? Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Me, since my man came back with it, I've been feeling so feminine. And yeah, your voice is okay. Because I'm okay. here with you, <laughs> bitches. I'm the man in this Look room. Look at this. <laughs> Me and Paul. We, I'm the man here. So. <laughs> yeah. Resting in your feminine. Resting in love. I thought that's what you're doing. Oh, I was right. supporting yeah, your yeah. point. Sorry. Oh, because he's not here right now. <laughs> but if he was, I'd just be like, yeah. Yeah, resting. In oh, my goodness. gosh. Yeah. We should do an episode about that. The other time we had said we were going to do an episode about that. Yeah, but we constantly avoid it because the truth is that we are <laughs> beastly masculine <laughs> we vibes. are we are gorillas we are gorillas <laughs> so now we're like what are we telling our audience yeah mm-hmm. but we can talk about what we aspire to yeah and actually true. why we feel like we should aspire to yeah. that and as we said you um, everyone has masculine and feminine mm-hmm. what you are looking for is balance more balance yeah so we we lead with masculine energy mm. and that's what usually you tap into when it's like you know go time and you know handling like things very, and doing yeah whereas feminine is more about resting receiving you know being in your body all that good stuff. <laughs> All that stuff. Yeah. Love it for you guys. L- love it for you. I'm just so Nance, happy for you. Queen feminine energy. Oh let her God. bring you. Let her open this door. You won't hear anything. I'm telling when you. When Morugi is coming in, I can tell from downstairs in the lift. <laughs> Morugi is coming. When you enter the shoot shouting, <laughs> hi, everyone, hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Oh. I'm like, Where's why? The feminine energy? It's okay. Relax. Rest. My lashes are my feminine energy. That's it. You're the only show. And your pink eyeshadow. That's it. Right. Thank you, guys. And welcome <laughs> to this episode of TMI Podcast KE. We hope that you have had a good week since our last episode. You know what? People are always saying that they're happy that TMI is released on Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. And I also am really happy. It's like a midweek pick me up. You know you what have I mean? thing with Wednesdays. I don't love you? Wednesdays. Yeah, I really Wednesday love Wednesdays. I told you when I was young, mm-hmm. Wednesdays used to be the day that we would have games mm-hmm. in school, like PE. Mm-hmm. And and also it was the day that we would have chips at mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. So they just, I just love Wednesdays yeah. so much. Yeah. And then it's also like you've done some part of the week, but also I have more of the week to execute everything else I need to do. Yeah. I just love them. I feel like I love Wednesdays now because mm. of TMI. Oh, good. Yeah, no more, no less. My favorite day is Sunday. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was born on a Sunday, so I love Sundays. I've just always loved them. Oh, really? Mm. I was born on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. You give Friday energy. I think I yeah, do. You do. Thank you give you. Friday energy. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anyway, guys, if you're here, we hope that you're following us on all our social media platforms TMI Podcast KE everywhere, Muruki Muni, Lydia KM everywhere as well, including threads, which you will not see us upload on like that frequently, but like once, maybe a month. The first day, <laughs> no the one day was we beating like... us. No one. <laughs> 30. Lydia, the first, the first morning. Thank God today didn't start without, without me. me. Now, where is, where is she with the motivation? They can't where? thank God themselves. No, and oh. already she posted it, so scroll down so you scroll can also down thank God. so you can see. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but we're working. We're on, on all social media on handles. All social we media are, we are. handles, yeah. yeah. Now, to our topic for today, as you've seen probably from the from the title, we're talking about something that we mention all the time yeah. on the podcast. Actually, literally all, all the, the time. time. And if you're on Lydia's page, then a day won't go 20, by without her saying definitely. it 27 Ooh, times, at definitely. least. 
we're talking about therapy and i think this is one of those things which i'm already prepared for someone to click off this video because they're like this one is not for me mm. but can i guarantee you that actually it's for you yeah. if that's what you thought it's mm. actually for you um we talk about therapy all the time about the fact that it needs to be normalized we talked about yeah. it um in that context um and also about the fact that there's a lot of barriers that people put for themselves as to why they can't go to therapy but us our job here is to always demystify who therapy is for mm -hmm. how much therapy costs how therapy can help you the things that therapy is not also yeah. um and just have a conversation around therapy and how it has helped us and things that we are dealing with yeah. um in therapy so that it can show you also what are the kind of things you talk about in therapy yeah and i think mm. anything we talk about so frequently without mm. giving context we always want to look back and give you guys context so that mm. when we say therapy mm. you have a full episode to go back on and see in depth exactly what we are referring to mm. the pros the cons the um the some of the um, misconceptions mm. you know you have a full episode exactly. i think we've done that with everything sex relation like yeah. so Literally that you everything. know you mm. when we have like one episode you can really um link to mm. i always to, um talk about therapy because it changed my life so i'm not mm. talking about it because i need you to spend your money yeah. like it makes no difference for her to or me, for us yeah but mm. it's uh it's something that i thought was so helpful and i imagine like what life would have been mm. to have been consistently going to therapy like yeah through your 20s or you know even a bit earlier on mm. so if i can help someone go a bit earlier if yeah. we can help you yeah. start seeing it as something important in your 20s yeah we're already changing a exactly generation. or even earlier i feel like i'm not yet at the place where i can say therapy has changed my life mm -hmm. but i'm definitely at a place where i can say therapy has made my life easier yeah. and better have you gone consistently yeah, long enough i was just about to oh, say that there you go can i that's can it. i speak sorry can baby. I? <laughs> Yeah, okay. I was about to say why. <laughs> yeah, why, why, why? And I was about to say, and only just because I only recently started mm. going frequently mm. or like consistently. Yeah. Because before I've gone to therapy when like I'm dealing with a big thing and I need help right, right now, now before some Insta serious issues. And the second that thing is solved, or I think Oof. it's solved, or I feel like it's solved, I'm like, yeah, okay, thanks. I think you've done what you mm. needed to do. But watching Lydia and how much this helped has definitely helped me also mm. be like, okay, there's a place for therapy in your everyday life, mm -hmm. in helping you deal with your everyday issues, giving you the tools and yeah. resources you need to deal with anything that comes so that it's not always crisis crisis crisis, crisis yeah. it's just like something comes and it's like i know what i need to do in this mm. situation and how to approach it yeah i yeah. agree I, mm. I think at time uh, the consistency always definitely matters for sure so yeah. i'm glad you said that yeah. um i also had a view of therapy from a place of help me fix this thing mm. like you're just here to solve this, this one particular problem issue, yeah and then when that's done see see we are good mm. but now i've come to see therapy like maintenance with like working out mm. or anything that's pertaining keeping your health in check that's mm. how i see therapy now i go yeah. once a month now and it's just one of those just dumping on her everything that i've been through the last month and then mm. we see where there are some misconceptions some limiting beliefs like any tools that i need to navigate the next month mm. that kind of thing so i think that's what most people believe I therapy is about exactly. my house is on fire help, help. me put it out yeah. and then after that it's like oh thanks we are we are good we're without done. actually realizing how much all the different parts of our life which even if these ones are going well mm. if one is is not going well mm. all those things kind of tie into each other yeah. your relationship with your parents is somehow tied to your relationship mm. with your man is mm. somehow tied to the way you are at work is somehow tied like they everything all connected in this little like a bubble yeah. it's yeah so it's really important to understand how those play into your life yeah. this episode is actually done in partnership with an amazing online platform called better help yeah. and what better help does is basically it's an online um, platform that helps you get connected to um, online or virtual therapists because we know how important it is to getting the right therapist because you, can, you yeah. can go to therapy and just have any therapist but it's like dating it's like you need to have the one. right there is my the one the right person yeah, yeah. exactly they and are. and for them it's more about um wherever you are in the world it's not about that you're in Kenya you're in uh, where are our audience from Rwanda so you know Uganda UK, UK US, US they yeah. basically just take your information the information that you provide to them like mm -hmm. your age are you married what kind of therapy are you looking for is there a particular um kind of like demographic of therapist you're looking for like above 40 above 45 above 50 or maybe you want someone who's the same age as you you. Yeah. They take all that information and they um, look through their database of therapists and connect you with someone who is um, in line with basically exactly what you're looking for, yeah. which is something that we actually really I actually had never heard of something like that before yeah. in Kenya. There in isn't. fact, all of us, we're all getting therapies from Lydia's stories. <laughs> there is no, <laughs> there are no platforms, yeah, yeah, to be mm. able to get a therapist. And I know I felt frustrated myself mm. when I was looking for a therapist. It was just like random numbers. 
God bless Nancy. She just sends me these random numbers that somebody else had posted. Mm. So I was just going through them, just calling. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they um what biases they have. It was just so much work. That's why I started um that list. But better help, this can happen in a few minutes. Yeah. You just go through, give the details. I've gone through the questions as well. And they're very detailed, even like things like what is is it you're struggling with? It could be control issue, it could be anxiety. I mean, these list on mm. list on list. So when your therapist is matched with you. They yeah. have all of this information that they have from the get-go because most of us is like you tell them something a little bit small on mm -hmm. the phone and then you hope that you can, you know, kind of align with the rest of the things. But this one, you, you're going to be able to align specifically to who you are looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and we we never come here empty-handed. We don't. We, we don't. never do. So yes. we have 10% mm -hmm. discount. Mm -hmm. um, you go through the link on our description, description box below. Mm. Um, so if you've been looking for a therapist, you're feeling like you're not aligning with someone, you also mm. want it to be virtual because there are so many benefits of virtual. I do virtual as well. Yeah. So it's like wherever in the world, when I go um, home, when I'm traveling anywhere, in any holiday, any earth, you have, you, you have there, your yeah. therapist. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. Yeah, I was just telling her actually before this is that we, her and I have very have different approaches with therapy. She mm. prefers to do it virtually. Mm. I prefer to do mine mm. um, physically. Mm. And I think it's just because for me, um, my home is not like a place which is just for me. Yeah. I feel like if it was just for me, I would definitely prefer to have it virtually. Yes. Mm. But because at home there's like my husband and my kids mm. and my nannies mm. and my sister, I feel like I can't be like alone in that there's space. There's a freeness. There's a don't freeness, have. exactly. Mm. And then at some point, now you're here, then mama, come and wipe me. Mm. And then someone else, oh, hakuna gas, gas mm. sasai meisha. And it's like, I just want to be there, just me. Therapy is one of those very few things which it's just like everything Intimate. in this room is about me. Intimate. And me. personal. It's very personal, yeah. yeah. So I prefer the physical, but I've definitely seen you enjoy the virtual. So if you're also a virtual um, therapy kind of person, BetterHelp will definitely um, help you to yeah. find a therapist. And we'll t talk more about them later. But mm -hmm. I want us to talk a bit about our therapy journeys. Yeah. How long have you been doing therapy? I've been doing therapy um, consistently since April last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've done therapy before, but it wasn't like the way I'm doing pers um, therapy now. So Marissa, peer therapy... Mm -hmm. Who I'm always talking about. Um, so she had this package that she was selling was like 45 day therapy or something like that, mm. and it was like pre recorded content, but you go through it like on a daily basis. So it was like therapy. Mm. That was the first time I did that. But this kind of you know talking therapy, mm. um, I started April last year, and I've been pretty consistent since then. Yeah, yeah, I love that. For mm. me, it's only literally been a couple of months. I think I started going in where when are we now? We're in August. Mm -hmm. I think I started going end of May. Yeah. Um. Is is when I've been going. But then I think you I've traveled. Done, then I traveled exactly. Mm -hmm. Then my therapist had traveled. Mm -hmm. I think I've done only like maybe about four sessions yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But even those four sessions, the relief that I feel <laughs> after a session. Once when you haven't had a session for a while, then it's like now you enter the room and just all like the let me tell you all the things. <laughs> and then my mother and then my kids. And really honestly, I just really don't. Eh. <laughs> it feels like you've lost weight afterwards. Honestly. And you know, despite the fact that we can be there for each other, yeah. the thing with a therapist is that, number one, I'm paying you to listen to my shit. Oh, yeah. So I don't care what happened with your mm -mm. kids before. I don't mm -mm. care what's going on with your husband. You are going to take all of this and it's like a place to emotionally dump freely literally as yeah. opposed to doing that to your friends because yeah. sometimes like you're gonna need boundaries with that mm -hmm. and also when i tell you something it's like i'm not worrying about how you're feeling yeah like because obviously if i'm hurt i'm like i know joe is hurt now exactly I know now i'm feeling really this. sad yeah and i'm at home just like you're just relaxing and lydia is crying <laughs> What kind of a friend are you? <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's like, it, it, there's too much nuances that, that come with like your personal relationship. Mm. But therapy is sweetie. It's just Ooh, so good. One-sided relationship. Yeah. All about me. Oh yeah. yeah I so. really, really, really and like I've, that. And mm. every time we talk about therapy and you tell me what you've learned, mm. we, for me, that is such a strong part of connecting with you. Oh really? Yeah. It's such a big part of connecting with that. you because it's like, watching you kind of excavate some of your stuff and understand yourself better. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's sexy that you even. <laughs> it's a baby, <laughs> baby. But it's I sexy get what you're to saying, me yeah. to have gone forward into something which is obviously scary and not something you actually really was like at the top of your list to enjoy yeah. doing, yeah. but you're doing it for yourself. That yeah. love for yourself to do mm -hmm. that, that's so attractive to I me. Know. She's I wish ten. my man She's would do it because I feel like I would just be like, you would, wow, what? baby, I know. You would love him I would him literally so never. Much. We would, I, yeah. Imagine him coming home. It's just like, okay, so. You know, I've realized therapy, that I have some. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see how that's affecting me as a husband and I want to do better. 
I just want baby number four. <laughs> baby number four, Give Lordy, a star. I Give will a second do it. Star. I'll now. do it. No, yeah, honestly, I just feel like that would be so. I completely get where you're yeah. coming from. Yeah, I just feel like it's so difficult to to like make men go for therapy or like encourage them to because it's just, like no, you just what keep issues doing, do like, I have? Guess what? Yeah. A lot of times it's like a matter of the more you do that. Mm. A lot of times for me, the way I've influenced people is like. Okay, the way Lydia is, mm. the way she thinks, the way she's seeing this, yeah. that's what I want for myself. Actually, yeah, that's how I ended up in therapy, I guess. Like, yeah, like, it's I want like to be able to you. see things this yeah. way. So you with a clear it. lens on life. Like, or I like what the lens. truth is, or, or is yeah. happening in this. So with you doing it, um, it might um inspire him for sure. I started <laughs> going to therapy because I wanted to deal with, I had just drawn some boundaries with my dad. And I wanted to ask my, I wanted my therapist to tell me, like, am I, do, am I, um, drawing these boundaries out of love or out of pain. Mm. That's actually what I wanted to like, to, for someone to validate mm. my boundaries. That's why I started. But this was April, right? I went through hellfire <laughs> um, in it's September. Hellfire. And thank God, thank God I had already established the habit of therapy. What happened? Ah, <laughs> mm, yeah, I've, I've we're together. I've been reminded, you know, so okay, I yeah. love that. It's like me, I went there for reason one, yeah. but who knew? And That's they found me to, there, mm. and it was like the best thing that I could have had mm, at that time. Mm. Oh, girl. Why did I you know, start going to thank therapy? God. So this particular time where, I, mm. so first of all, me, the therapy that I've been to before, mm. yeah, initially I have gone to therapy um, mostly like as a, as a couple with mm -hmm. Zach. Mm -hmm. So we've done like several rounds of marital therapy, mm -hmm. like maybe three or four times mm -hmm. we've been on, mm -hmm. in marital therapy, but I've never constantly gone by myself. Yeah. This time mm -hmm. I needed it because um, one, Lydia and Tebby kept telling me that I needed to go. <laughs> But it's because now when my man was away when he was in the UK, I don't I feel like I wasn't managing life as as efficiently as I thought that I was. Yeah. Like to some extent, I was like, I'm managing, but am I managing? Do you know kind it's of like thing? You're it's like being held things, together. That's the thing. Things are getting done, but how are you, sweetie? Mm. How are you? And I feel like I wasn't I was in a place where I was just like, I'm not really in a great space mentally. It's mm. like I'm struggling to balance all those things people always DMing you. Like, wow, I love your work life balance. Do you being held? Do you? I'm being by held a by string. a string. You're I was hanging a, ooh, this no, together. no, no. I was struggling. Mm. So I just felt like I wanted a place where I could just go and like again exhale mm. and just be and just say. So for me, actually, there's not like one specific thing, but mm. I mean, being there now has shown me that actually I have a lot. <laughs> I have quite a bit, quite a bit to unpack. Yeah. But that was the main reason why I actually ended up going. Yeah. In the past, like I've said, it was just more of like a band-aid kind of thing. Mm. And it did help. Mm. But even with the marriage therapy, I kind of wish that we had done it for long because the yeah. most we've ever done is like three or four sessions. Mm. And then that's it. Mm. And mm, I can tell you, it, yeah. it could have been better. Yeah. yeah. It's, like that monthly thing, I think is always easier to mm. introduce it as like kind of a part of life. Yeah. So anyway, we're, um, we're doing an episode on the things that which, which we have learned. I'm so curious to hear your own. And honestly, this is probably going to be the episode I love her the most. I'm not going oh, to lie. Please. I just know. I just know. <laughs> just hearing her like talking about... Mm. Okay, before yeah. we talk about things we've learned, can you, can you give us like maybe what are some general life issues or general topics mm. that you've addressed or are addressing okay. in therapy. Yeah. So first one, um, as I said, was the boundaries with my dad. Actually, the, the just the dance with mm. my dad, that has been um, a main topic of conversation with um, in therapy. Two, as I said, when I was going through Hellfire with the, the breakup, like the stories about love and your limiting beliefs around that, mm. which is like what's contributing contributing not the sole mm -hmm. reason contributing to some of the way things um, are, are going um there was a time when i went just a session because i was like i'm losing my mind my eye is twitching i feel like overwhelmed with work and so much emotion so sometimes it's just like life itself mm -hmm. um recently um i when i had this when i've been having this period of like intentionally being single which by the way is over now um <laughs> But she's still single. I'm still just to single. clarify, just because they're going to take you know, it. Yeah. No, 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 no. You know these people. It's that intentionally single way. Just like, I yeah. want to be alone. I don't want to talk yeah. to anyone for a while. Mm. Anyway, when I was going through that season, I wanted to... Um, I wanted to excavate some of my limiting beliefs around singlehood, mm. around um, being alone, al around what validation you get when you're in a relationship and all of these other things that come fr mostly from like projections of society. Mm. I wanted to see what in me was still entrapped and how I can navigate, um, navigate around that. Um, what else have I gone 
therapy about here's a truth about therapy actually is that I feel like some sometimes you go to therapy for a particular reason or like you when you're going to a session you know exactly, exactly what, what you talk yeah. about. But other times by the way you're not mm, even prepared because sometimes like there's a time I went and me I was like me I knew we were going to talk about like my marriage but then you say something and they're like um you just said that uh, you you know for a fact that this is this. how do you know that for a fact? And then now literally your you're dad. going in this it's your dad you did <laughs> and this. now you're walking in the complete like mm. therapy by the way can really open your eyes up to the most problematic things that you are believing, that you are enduring, that you are living, that you actually have absolutely no clue that they are problematic. Yeah. Is and let, and the, the thing with therapy mm. is there, it, it shows you the things which you take on as truth. Mm. And and it's like, who said this is true? Yeah. That to me is w- what sometimes the, the things that blow my mind are yeah. those. Yeah. You go in there with a the truth. You swear yeah. this is how it must be done. How do and you know? It's just like, mm. yeah. How do you know? Who, who told who you told that? You that? <laughs> that? That little... Who I will you finish that? you. <laughs> Actually, sometimes I'm just like, but everyone knows. Yeah, but but who? See like, everyone who said that. No, but see everyone. <laughs> sometimes you actually feel kind of dumb. You're you just feel like, daft. Oh. You're like, oh yeah, right. Yeah. Hmm. So like it, it it helps you kind of break down some of your false truths so that you know mm. the things that you're choosing truly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, those are some of the some things of the which I've navigated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for me, I mean, I've just started therapy, but I think on the first. Um, in our first meeting, mm. I mean, she asked me, what are some of the things that in your life are not working as efficiently mm. that you would want to talk about? Mm. Or like some, um, I don't know, life things that you're going through that you would love to be able to address. Yeah. One big one is my marriage, mm-hmm. um, which is fantastic and it's mm. going great. But I feel like um, there, were, there are just some, some, some ways in which I am in my marriage or like the things that happened in our marriage that I was just like, I want to talk about this and see if I'm managing them in the most effective right. or efficient way mm-hmm. possible for them. Maximum amount of happiness and maximum amount of peace. Mm-hmm. Um, and also just like discussing things that have happened in our past, how we've moved past them mm-hmm. and just our our interaction generally and how am I as a wife? That's yeah. one of the main ones. Um, my relationship with my dad is obviously a big one and how that informs my relationship with men now, how that informs my interactions Everything. with the world. The way you view your world, the way you view your world is like, why is that one person? Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Or the, my, how it ties to my people pleasing. Because apparently people pleasers started out as parent pleasers. Of course they did. Damn. Who knew that? Mm-hmm. Um, Managing my work-life balance. That was yeah. also a really oh. um big one. Exactly. Yeah. And just like who, who I am as a person who is not like a podcaster mm-hmm. or a mom or uh, I don't know, an influencer. Mm-hmm. Who am I just as? Murugi, you know, and what does that look like, or what do I want that to look like, yeah. and how does that Murugi interact with these different aspects or spheres of her life? Yeah, crazy. That's interesting. Yeah, um, and then a final one is also like um co-parenting specifically, and like parenting my kids, mm. and how that as they are growing up, how that's changing, how that's shifting. The more that um you know Ethan especially as Ethan gets older Mm. and his interaction with the girls Mm. and how that manages sometimes I feel like I don't think enough about how how what a unique situation positive co-parenting is Mm -hmm. I actually don't think about it at all it's only when people DM me and they're like wow I love how this you know your situation just works so beautifully and peacefully I actually if to me just I never occurs to me Mm. but sometimes it does like this morning Mm. it ended with me crying by the way Oh, so when I'm showing forward, up, she cried. I cried, yes. Mm. So when we went to, um, I went for Mukeni and Mutana's parents' teachers mm-hmm. meeting. So they give you like the books. This is what they have been doing all term. So on Mondays, usually they, they, they'll have, they'll draw something about how their weekend was. It's mm. called weekend news. Mm. And so as I turned through like Mutana's and Mukeni's weekend news, I realized there are so many weekends where she just draws mom, dad, Kenny and Tana. Mm-hmm. And there's no Ethan, mm. but that's because some weekends, actually a lot of weekends, mm. he's not at home with mm. us. Mm. And I was just like, so like in her mind, sometimes he's just not there because if he's not around, she just wouldn't draw him in the book. And yeah. so many pages of the book don't have him there. Mm. Am I going to cry? I'm not going to. No, you're not going to. Are you sure? No, but you have the freedom to. Do you have tissue? You don't. I will so. not. I'm just, you see, mm. I'm holding back my tears because mm. you don't have tissue here. Yeah. But anyway, that I realized then that it's like, the, the older he gets and the more aware everyone is of the situation, mm. the more difficult it kind of becomes because now they understand what the modalities is are. So answering their questions, explaining why on some days, some weekends he's not there, other weekends he's there. It's just like, 
it's a lot and I didn't realize how a lot it is mm. until like you know some moments like that one yeah. so that's a big one we haven't gotten to that one yet which is why I'm still crying about it see I'm still trying to manage my emotions yeah. in regard to that mm. yeah I mean first of all all of them like make sense why you you go to therapy and yeah. I love that all of them are really not necessarily like the world is on fire more like yeah. how can I be better in this and mm. that's a really great attribute yeah. to have that mentality like yeah sure my marriage is good no one is fighting but how else can I be better how else yeah. can I show up better mm. as a wife and to be honest that's enough reason to go to therapy mm. it doesn't have to be anything about like fires burning or anything like that yeah. you know mm. I feel like my parents separated when I was young mm. so I know the dance of two homes yeah, right exactly. and not even necessarily mm. in, in the same fashion his is because at least he gets like both of them mm. right in a but, loving, but just way, the yeah. whole mm. mom and dad are separate and uh, the dance that that, yeah, that exactly. comes with but mm. Considering I've been in that situation, I can tell you that the way the the infrastructure you guys have put in place yeah. are so they are safe and like you know stable mm. and consistent. So it's not like it's randomized. It's, it's not like randomized. at least exactly. everyone knows what to expect. But yeah, I, I definitely empathize. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That I mean, that's even just the 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 sitting to think about what aspects of my life do I feel like I would like an external person to speak to speak mm. to about mm. and tell me. Am I doing the right thing? Mm. Like you from an external point of view, tell me, do you think yeah. that this is the best way that I could be yeah. doing doing this? You know, kind of thing. Mm. And I mean, yeah, it's just sometimes it's a lot. It ah, is. Sometimes. Life. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes I get off therapy. What, this time yeah. I go out therapy and I was angry. Yeah. I was oh. like, am I going to be dealing with this forever? First of all, you're it's always tiring. hungry. As soon as I finish therapy, Definitely. I'm just like, I need food. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I need food right now because I feel like literally I've been running. Yeah. I've been running. I need an but, hour yeah. to rest or sit or drink water or yeah. relax. Yeah, eh? yeah it's a lot. But yeah, this is honestly, I feel like I almost feel dumb for having waited this long to start therapy for a person whose life consists of so much stuff yeah but that's another reason again also in therapy she she one of the things she pointed out in our first session which is maybe even one of these things i've alluded to right now is like there are so such heavy things you're saying but the way you're saying them it makes me feel like you don't realize how heavy those things are that you're saying because i'm just like yeah oh and then my dad you know and then there was this whatever it's just like oh you know this is just life but she's like that's a really heavy thing you always talk about things in this way and because i don't I want know. i don't want to raise your sense of awareness and yeah. emotional sensitivity about it so that you don't realize just how heavy we are and then you break down and are unable <laughs> to move for days i kind of just let you talk about it lightly but yeah. so many things you yeah. experience i'm just like this is That's... something you need to take a, a week of work you for. know i know ah! But you see, I think I do that to just protect myself yeah. from like, I can't afford to like now have a breakdown now mm. because then who's taking the kids to school? You know, yeah. who's doing A, B, C and D? They need to get done kind of thing. And the, that's but even that, that, that narrative itself. is problematic. Even that narrative. And, but I get yeah. it. It's survival. Yeah. 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 And and this is why I was saying at the beginning, you might have thought this episode is not for you. But for a lot of people, you don't think you need therapy, but actually you do. Yeah. I need you to know that you do because sometimes we get so normalized to like the issues in our lives that you don't realize how how much they're actually affecting you as a person and how much they're affecting your decisions and the people yeah. around you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why I love what Better Help is doing. Especially if like you're a work person or like you work remotely or um you I don't know, you are in a place which is like I don't know, remote Sudan or something like that, you literally can still access the best quality mental um health tools. And for me personally, yeah. I found that it's far more, it's better to be more consistent, more, you're, it's more likely you're consistent mm. when you are going to an online therapist than not. That's because true. Because anywhere yes. you go, like when I travel or anything like that, I have that on hand. And also, for example, there's a time when I was in Bristol mm. and because I do therapy online, I have it, I went on my phone in the car. Oh, wow. Because if, mm. despite the fact that I tell my mom and my sister everything, you need freedom. No, you I want to be able to say, today yeah. I hated I her. Thought... <laughs> I, I want to that freedom. I don't want someone to be listening in the room. So I went in the car mm. and I just w was online. So yeah. if you want, especially if you, me, I, I encourage people to do online so you can be consistent, especially the first couple of months mm. so that you, you it can really stick with you, yeah, you know? Exactly. And also with um with better help, you can do like online messages and, uh, and chats, which mm. is like most Actually, other yeah, online most, therapists yeah. won't do that. Yeah. It's like you have your session, that's it. But mm. with um with 
um, better help. You're able to do messages and chat. So it's like you mm. can really have somebody who's like as consistent mm. and, you know, the present, yeah, especially exactly. when you're starting so out. So it's a subscription service, but mm. like for a reason. So it's yeah. not just, you're, you're not just paying for like your therapy mm. session, like mm. which happens weekly. Yeah. You're actually paying for having access to or the... four weeks. Yeah, the four yeah. weeks, exactly. Mm. Having access to the therapist, which yeah. is really, really important. Mm. Reminder that the link is down in the description. So if you want to give it a try, yeah. you can just click on that link, get your 10% off, answer the question. It, it, how long did it take you to answer those questions? Like, oh my god, maybe like four or five minutes. Four or five minutes, yeah. yeah. And but it's depending just, on mm. what you say, so for example, if you say yes um, to one of the questions, is that you suffer um, from anxiety or maybe mm. you've been having um, suicidal thoughts, then mm. the questions might extend yeah. based on the way you're answering them, mm. you know. So it's okay if you go there and it's like it's taking maybe a bit longer than the five yeah. minutes is because they are tailor fitted. So if you answer this one, mm -hmm. then there might be more questions based yeah. on what you're, what you're going through. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't take long. It doesn't basically. take long. I yeah. also like the, the fact that it gave you the option of like, do you know exactly why you want to go to therapy? Yeah. Because some people do, some people can be like, my marriage is falling apart. Mm -hmm. And so therefore I need a marriage therapist or I need a child therapist for yeah. my child, or I need a personal therapist. Yeah. You can tell exactly you, what it is you're going to therapy for, but some people don't know. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh, I don't know. I've seen Lydia saying that I need to go for therapy so you know, me, people I'm here. do that they're yeah. like oh yeah Lydia said we should so I'll just yeah. go <laughs> uh, but which is good me I feel like that's a commendable good, first step is. Yeah. <laughs> also that just person go. in their second session and I just I can't yeah. really deal with this most of the time that's what they say <laughs> at the end it's just like huh? So this is what I was carrying. No, yeah. girl, we've been crying. It's we've been true. crying. And in for therapy. the people who are very sensitive about who the therapist is, based on how unique mm. your issue is or what mm. you want to navigate, like maybe um, members of the um, LGBTQIA plus community, mm -hmm. if you are Christian based, depending on the sensitivity, you have the option mm -hmm. of getting a therapist who's tailor fitted to that because, yeah, or even if you um, are, are of any religion or necessarily just Christian based, mm -hmm. you can have a conversation, you can share your preferences mm -hmm. so that yours is like particularly unique to just you. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you ever had a bad experience with a therapist? I've, this is the only therapist I've ever had. Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm. God's favorite, aren't God's you? God's favorite. But it took some time for me to mm -hmm. find her. And I, as I also said, it's like, I I um I found her like with my energy. You, I'm an energy person, you so really are. I knew I I knew the kind of voice I wanted. I knew some somebody who sounded more authoritative more than me mm. because I want hey, to. Hey, that's a high bar. Yeah, because I want to. Yeah, I want you to be to sound more authoritative more than me, and mm. I want you to feel like I can respect your view because I know a lot. Like I'm yeah. I've so I'm self taught on so many things. So I wanted that. I want somebody who's a bit older, yeah. like maybe like late thirties, but not like too much older mm. than when I say Instagram you're like what? Yeah. Yeah. Is You know I had so many preferences but the second she picked up the phone and we spoke first of all she didn't sound like she cared if I signed up it was yeah. a matter of this is what I offer this is I'll my rate. Email. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, "Damn, that's." And I'm telling you, this is how women are with men. The man who is acting like he didn't want you, that's yeah. the one you're like, oh, "Okay, you'll get me." God forbid. God forbid. <laughs> to to fear me. Qua, to fear <laughs> But you know, you want somebody who sounds confident in themselves that they are yeah. not like kind of desperately seeking this client. Yeah, yeah. I like that mm -hmm. also. What about you? You told me you've had. Yeah, some bad I've had ones. some some negative experiences, especially the mar marriage therapy mm -hmm. ones. A couple of them, like we've been to, which we ended up now not even staying, is like very very Christian based. Yeah. So for me, it's already a red flag if like I've told you the issue and the issue, first thing is just like, but have you prayed about it? You know, because this can be solved with prayer. Sweetie, I need, no. I need. <laughs> me for me, none at all. I, just, I don't yeah. want to hear it. And the thing is that I feel like there's a way that you can, even if you are going to a Christian-based therapist, mm. there's a way that you can give me practical solutions. It's Christian-based. Yeah, based. based. It's not just all, just like, just pray about it. Just go for whatever. So I need here? an actual solution. Something that we can do physically yeah. that's going to help us. Yeah. So that was one negative one. Another I one was like, that. you <laughs> girl, yeah. Another one um, that we went to, mm was she was so this one I actually saw her personal first and then now together mm. and she just seemed to have a lot of like preconceived notions about how women and men are then and so she would just say things like hey you know a woman is not supposed to do that a woman is not supposed to like a lot of things and she's like ah no as a woman you can't do that and I was just like girl no <laughs> no mm -mm. I was just like yo she she was in the wrong career I didn't tell her I just never went back yeah but like for me already if you have that preconceived notion of like what it's like who I am. Yeah, that's no, so it's not about, that's the thing mm. and I just I was so uncomfortable in that in that setting yeah. me I need to know that the person who I'm who is my therapist is open-minded first I need you to be open-minded and you need to be seeing the world <laughs> with a clear lens 
for you yourself. to even be helping me. If you have your biases, how are you helping me, That's Jane? That's the thing, yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I was just like, no, thank God. I, it was just like I had paid for one session. And before even that session, she had said we should pay for four mm. sessions in advance. See? No. For me, I personally feel like a lot, like I, sometimes what therapists want is that to mm. make sure you're consistent, mm. you know? But personally, if I don't necessarily have to, I don't necessarily want to. Mm. But now, like we're, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Go to your button. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> on better help, by the way, once you filled in the form, it takes them a few days for them to um match Assign with a therapist. Mm. And when you go for one therapy session, if you decide that it's not a good fit for you, they can match you Damn. with someone else, mm. which is great because then now it's not like oh you are driving to Westlands now you need to drive to Siokimau. It's mm. literally just there on your laptop. So yeah. I find that's really helpful. Yeah. So um, let's talk about like some realizations we've had. Yeah. Through therapy. Yeah. These are the, the deep ones. Then when she says something, you're like, hmm. Well, hmm. Yeah. Mm. So many moments like that. But let me tell you, your body feels so relaxed after because you realize all those like limiting beliefs and false truth, they hold tension yeah. in your body. Yeah. Yeah. So the first one, remember, um, I had shared before that the reason why I went to therapy in the first place was because I wanted to figure out whether or not I was, um, I was setting my boundaries with my dad from a place of pain or from a place of love mm. and what she asked me is like why can't they be from a place of pain mm. she was like if you break your leg and you feel pain it prompts a decision for you to go to the hospital so why is it when you feel pain you don't think that's enough for you for that to prompt you to mm. make a decision to stop you from experiencing more pain mm. this was session one <laughs> You should have left. You should have stopped at that point because like, who needs that? What? No. And she was just like, you can you can place a boundary, which basically t says, I don't want to feel pain anymore. Mm. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know. Mm -mm. You just know that pain is being caused mm. towards you, and you don't want to feel it anymore. And that's enough to make any decisions, especially boundaries. Oh, wow. That was the, that was the first one. And I, and, I, and I was just like, why did I feel like that couldn't be enough of a reason? Yeah. Don't even, don't oh even go God, down that other rabbit hole. Because I was just like, why didn't I feel like someone um, hurting me was enough of a reason for me to draw a boundary and be okay and justify it to myself? Yeah. Or the because idea of the whole that, parent yeah, thing, you know, this thing. is your Ooh. this is your family, this is your parent. Oh so it doesn't God. matter if you're in pain. It doesn't matter if you're being hurt. Mm. That's where you get that. Oh my God. And this is why I stopped dancing with that. You know, family is everything. That makes people feel so much pressure yeah. about how they deal with their family. Because yeah. the truth is, if family was everything, I wouldn't be in pain exactly. in a family situation. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Especially as an adult. Because like now, I mean, you're not paying my bills. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm literally choosing to be here to suffer. Yeah. You're choosing to suffer. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, actually. So that was mm. a, a paradigm shifting um, lesson in mm. that it taught me that it's up to me the decisions I make when I'm in pain yeah. to help me navigate or keep me away from yeah. feeling more pain. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. I love that. You know, by the way, Lydia's therapist is pretty much like both of our therapists because she'll come and she'll share the lessons and I'll be like, how can I apply that to my life right now? Mm. Yeah, I always share what my therapist. Yeah, yeah, she, oh, oh, yeah. And yeah. I actually love it so much. So let's see what Lydia has learned this week. It's really, it's quite eye-opening. It's quite nice. Also, it's nice to know that like the, the experiences that you're experiencing are not unique to you. No, Do you know we're what I mean? all going through the same yeah. bullshit. Maybe like the uniqueness of like the particular thing that's the causing your pain. Yeah, yeah but the general tools and resources are pretty much similar, you know, just yeah. like opening your mind up to accepting a different point of view. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I learned, and this one was actually from my most um, recent one, is I was speaking a lot about being overwhelmed and feeling like there's so much work and there's so much life, like so many things that I need to take care of. Mm -hmm. And one thing that she told me is that she feels that I've hired myself for positions in my life that I need to fire myself from mm -hmm. because she said that I, I, I do my part and then I'm always trying to help other people do their part as well, as yeah. opposed to just letting them do their part. Mm -hmm. Because the point is for them to be there, to do theirs, so that it lessens my load. Mm -hmm. But me, what I do is I, I do my part, and then not even your part. Now I'm trying to help you do. Yeah. And it's just like, why are you doing that? No one has asked you to do that, and yeah. you don't have to. Yeah. So like an example is, for example, like... um what uh I'll, I'll let's say me and my husband have already agreed that you're going to take the kids to school and me i'm going to bathe them in the evening so i've bathed them in the evening but in the morning when it's time for taking them to school me i'm not just resting in bed which i could be mm -hmm. but i'm up making sure that he is doing his part of 
taking the kids to school on time. Oh, but it's like no exhausting. one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's exhausting. And for him, it's even also more annoying for him because he's just like, you're micromanaging. You yeah. already gave me the task. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to do it, do it then yourself. Mm -hmm. And then he gets mad. Then I get mad. <laughs> now we are mad at each other and everyone is like, mad. everyone is just mad. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like, if already he knows that that's his task, he's an adult just mm -hmm. like you. He's also an adult. He's also a parent mm -hmm. and he knows what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. So the outcome is on him mm -hmm. and it's not, it's you rest sweetie yeah. stay in bed and rest because the point of why i told him to take them anyway mm. is so that i could rest yeah. but now i'm not even resting when we first started working for with tmi mm. i used to feel like is it that i'm not working I hard remember. enough yeah <laughs> because she, she does everything she's trying to do everything for everyone and everything needs to be and i was just like what but yeah. the longer i went to therapy the more i realized this is just like a way that you manage things right mm. for example it would be something which it's nancy who needs to do <laughs> Right. So Nancy is Joe's PA as well as TMI's PA. So I can see how what you do with Nancy with mm. your work mm. now on TMI. And I'm just like, wait, this is something which is Nancy's job. But yeah. then you are promising to do it. Then half the time we rush what we need to do because you're doing what she needs to I do. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. But you see, now I'm kind of learning, like even like I filling in are. forms. You just sign yeah. and they fill in the details. <laughs> you see, but yeah, this I was just like, okay, yeah. I don't know. I just thought that. I, in my mind, everything is my responsibility. If I'm interested in the outcome, yeah. I feel like automatically, even the, the ways to get there yeah. are my responsibility. Yeah. But they don't, they, they can be my responsibility, but it's not necessarily me who has to do them. It's true. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I saw this um, quote, those who don't trust control. Ooh. So for you to be able stop to... Stop this. <laughs> no, stop this. Lydia, stop this. It's true. If you don't trust that something's going to be done, right? Because that's actually what delegating is. I trust that this will be done. Mm. And I trust that this would be done. Well, I trust that the children will go to school. Yeah. As you said. Because of course they will. It's the trust. Yeah. When you trust, you release control. But that it's hard. It's I really... used to be kind of like that. But there's, there's a way gently, Um, I guess through therapy, mm. I started seeing myself like releasing it and just yeah. being like, you, you can't just be, you can't do everything. Not to imagine mm. motherhood and marriage. Mm. I know. That's oh the God. thing. You need because to go to the chiropractor. I, I just know. <laughs> your back needs to be cracked. It girl. needs to. Because in my head, girl, you see, I start thinking, okay, I, I gave this person this so that I am not as anxious about this thing happening. But giving it to them is it's making more. me more anxious. Because now I'm just like, will it then be done the Trust. way I would have wanted it done? But as Lydia said, it's like no one else will do something exactly the way like you do you. it. But as long as it's like 70%, 70%. of how you would do it exactly. That's, that's the level of delegation. That's the level of delegation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that was a heavy pill to swallow. I personally feel like if you man once you navigate through that, mm -hmm. when you manage through that, oh god, yeah. yeah, it will be like a new a new world. I know a new world for you, where it's just like don't you don't, don't spend be. so much of your time thinking are other things done. You trust that they're done. Yeah, you do what you need to do. Oh girl, we have, we've just started that journey. Yeah, it's okay. This last it's okay. It's a journey. journey it's going all a journey. To Neda. Mm. Um, another thing which I learned from therapy um, is question every should. I shared it with Joe mm. the other day. So shoulds are things which are imposed on you, right? Like who said you should do that? And it's okay if you know exactly who said it, but you need to trail back to that. And you know, especially the shoulds, you just say mm. it during conversation. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know what? Yeah, I should definitely. It's just like, um, wow. who taught you that you should, should do that? Mm. Who taught you that? Who taught you that you should show up in this way? Mm. I mean, she's like, I'm happy for you to say I want to. I'm happy to say that that's something I feel like I need to do, but I want you to question your should. So now, even when other people are talking and they say should, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So it's been, it's allowed me to break a lot of my mm. um, misconception and false truth. And if mm. you trail back to should, for example, I was telling you, there's some shoulds that I support, right? Yeah. You should work hard. Oh, yeah. oh I think even if I want to work hard, yeah. whatever. Anyway, there's, there's some shoulds which I saw that were supporting who I wanted to be yeah. and the way I wanted to show up, right? Mm. Or like you should be a good person, you right? You should keep your promises to yourself. You see, those kind of things. Mm. But at the end of the day, you want to see who gave you that should mm. so that you can decide and actually make an adult choice mm. whether or not you want to continue yeah. with it. So yeah, yeah, that has been changing. I also feel like the problem with shoulds is that it's a standard you hold for yourself, but you realize you start holding that standard for other people. Ooh. So when other people don't adhere to your shoulds, it's just kind of like, no, that's wrong. But like, really, it's so frustrating to you because you're like, you're not doing what you should do. But it's like, just because you have accepted the should, no, I can't. That's, that's your should. 
It's not mine. Yeah. I, I live know. in relationships. Ooh. I know. Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst. I should, so you should. should. Mm. Ooh, but who told you who should said? do? Who said? Taking peer pressure okay. from dead people. I should contribute to family get together contribution things. Should you? Is that your should you've accepted? I'm asking you. What? Sh you, should should you? you do that? Yeah. Contribute I to like family weddings, family funerals, family, you know, sick people, whatever. Family weddings. I mean, these are all very many things. So yeah. weddings, a different animal. Sickness, a different animal. So should you contribute? Ooh, I don't know. I feel like that one needs to be a what you want to do. Mm. I is and it's it's a should. Like I should for me. I don't actually know. I don't. I hardly ever use the word should. Mm. I want to take care of my family. I want to contribute to um like the livelihood of my show or anything like that when where I can mm. definitely. Okay. Yeah. Is there any should attached to that? Because the should is where black tax comes in. I don't even think bl um, black tax to me, there's some degree that I've accepted. Mm. I am not going to not contribute to like, you know, something to do with my family. Like not everyone and not in every degree, but I feel like that's something I want to do. I want to participate in that. Right. And maybe it is a should and I've clearly accepted it. And yeah, by the way, it's okay perhaps. to accept shoulds, but know that, that you're exist. accepting shoulds. No. Oh my God. Your vocabulary even changes when you start going to therapy. You don't just yeah. talk anyhow. Because you know, every time you talk in therapy, she's like, hmm, what do you say that? Yeah. Hmm, what did I you know. get that? Mm. Actually, sometimes these ask questions, I'm just like annoyed. You know, it's like, but you I know. I so right. I felt <laughs> like I was on such a good momentum. You know? Giving you this vent of how wrong he was. And she's like, oh, that's interesting. That's Actually, interesting. a lot of our, <laughs> a lot of our, our, our therapy sessions start with, with me saying, tell me if I was wrong. Yeah. Tell me if I'm the asshole. So let me give you a practical example. Mm -hmm. This last time when I went, it was it was after I came back from the UK. Mm -hmm. So I, I told her, she asked me to tell her, what, tell me about your most recent fight mm -hmm. with your husband. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, let me tell you what he did. It ended with, I was in the wrong, actually. You were in the wrong. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was like, we had, I had gone to the UK to visit him for his birthday. It was now the day before his birthday. We were in Wales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were at the Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So he gets on a call with the kids. I think I told you about you this. Did. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he gets on a call with the kids. The call lasts a really fucking long time like two and a half hours and at some point i'm getting upset because i'm like i flew all the way to the uk to see you and spend time with you but you just want to be on phone with the kids so then you go back and be with them and me i've come all the way here mm -hmm. so basically i threw a little tantrum because i felt like you I, I want your attention and affection here right now but he obviously like also wanted to talk to the kids because he's not been with them for a long time and whatnot so she kind of like when i was telling her the story she just kind of kept quiet and just been like okay can you, you know yeah. what's coming you know what's coming when they're oh, quiet yeah then she's like so you you went you went there to spend time with him because it's his birthday um and it's like so you want it to be special for him can, if you put yourself in his shoes where you've not seen your children for i don't know how many months mm -hmm. do you imagine you would want to speak with them for a certain amount of time i was like yeah but like I mean, <laughs> I was really defending. I was yeah. fighting yeah. for my life. But basically, after we talked for a long time, I realized that with Zach is the only person who, with whom I feel like you, do, I don't have any obligation towards you. You don't have any obligation towards me. And it's he's like from from him. Do I get the most wholesome love or like love where I feel like I can be completely with reckless abandon myself mm -hmm. so like when that is not available at that time i just feel like kind of like mm -hmm. i'm floating around and it's just like you know i just i need him to focus on me when i want him to focus on me that's it yeah i can only be little morugi when i'm with him you know yeah. kind of thing it's mm -hmm. just like because i feel like i pour into so many places and i feel like he fills my love bank mm -hmm. um and she kind of just showed me she's like it's that's a lot of pressure to put on one person yeah. for him to be holding your entire emotional well-being mm -hmm. <laughs> together yeah it's a lot and it's like he can't do that yeah. all the time and like what would have been the worst thing to happen if you just let him finish talking to the children like what's the worst thing that could happen and sometimes it's like where were you why did you not whisper you this know. before i do the tantrum and ah, cause the fire no, 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 where no. were you i love the idea the way that the better help party has chat chat chats with Instantly. the therapist I oh want to be my like, listen, god i'm getting mad at my husband this is what is happening tell me am i the asshole i just want to know <laughs> Just tell me, am I the asshole? Because in that situation, me, I genuinely felt like, no, I can't see how you are being so selfish by not focusing on me. Yeah. But she's like, you don't see how you might have been being selfish because he's also an adult. He's also a parent to the kids. So he knows he can see the impact of the different things. It's like, you want him to see your point of view, but are you seeing his point of view? Ugh, I and hate therapy like, sometimes. Paid, did I pay? I paid mm. to come and have this to, conversation. To be tagged. Mm -mm. 
Honestly, this is what I, I came yeah, for. yeah. Oh, geez. But yeah, so that was an, a very eye opening activity. A very eye opening. And I think now, from based on that one thing, it's really made me think like since then, a lot of times when I'm just like, I really get mad about something he's done. And then when I reverse it and be like, but you, if it was you, how would you want him to react? How would he actually react? Yeah. Like the plate on the sofa. If you're following her, you would know what we're talking about. But anyway, she always apparently goes on and on on, on Zach when he puts his plates like on the dishes on the sofa. Yeah, I guess so. He so recently much. took a picture and sent it to her and told her, you see, it can, it happen, can happen to, to anyone. anyone. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So it's made me realize that <laughs> he does extend me a lot of grace. But yeah. him, the uh, one thing, like, I'll just be like, why can't you just think. be an think. <laughs> think? That's the problem. <laughs> Not thinking. So yeah, I would say therapy is making me a better wife, guys. Yeah. yeah. I I'm, I'm just like being more observant of how my reaction to things mm. either makes them better or makes them worse. Mm. And it either, either helps me achieve then my end objective or like absolutely doesn't. And half the time it's like you're not even aware that what you're doing is not giving you the end objective. Yeah, exactly. Because you're, you're sure if you throw a tantrum, then they'll come to you. Yeah. Protest behavior, apparently not. <sighs> Girls. Yeah. Please. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, what's another thing? Um, another thing that therapy has um has helped me learn is to define what is right for myself. Mm -hmm. And I'll give an example. So um a, a lot of the, this was like a dance. Like when I was going through um the breakup, there was a big dance about what getting it right is. I have a really strong sense of right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because um my you parents are actually, teachers. You do yeah, um, I don't know if it's because my parents are teachers, but I have a very strong this is right and this is wrong, mm -hmm. right? So that's something, by the way, she's definitely helped change what does right mean and mm -hmm. wrong mean, right? So after the demise of my last relationship, I was very hell-bent on this, like, you know, it's like getting it right. Like, I got it wrong mm -hmm. with this, right? And she was trying to tell me that it's like, if you got it wrong, like you, this is a decision you made. So you, if it was so right, mm -hmm. you would have just continued on that path. Mm -hmm. So she was just like, what does, getting it right for you me not what mm -hmm. the societal standard is what is getting it right for you is mm -hmm. and we we ended up defining that getting it right for me is only being in places where i belong and this and one of the reasons why my last decision was the right decision is because i felt like i didn't belong there anymore mm -hmm. it, didn't, it didn't feel like it was aligned with who i am now so she's just like as you go on you need to let what getting it right for you mm -hmm. really means as opposed to thinking like, okay, I left a relationship when I was 31. For me, what I've wanted for myself is to be married at this time, mm -hmm. to have kids at this time. That's what the societal right is. That's mm -hmm. what you're told is the right. But what's your right? Mm -hmm. And you have to go to the beat of that because if you don't, you're going to be constantly conflicted with these two things. Mm -hmm. You make a decision and it's the one that's right for your right. Mm -hmm. But then when you step out of it, you start conflicting it with like the societal right or how things are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And that was another... So what do we do now? Yeah, so now, so such to do. Yeah, okay. that was that really changed the way I see things yeah. as far as like defining for me what makes sense to me. Mm. Because it's like, okay, fine, go back then. If you're so wrong, you can undo it. Like go, like fast. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you. So, okay, getting it right for you is is being where you belong. So yeah. when you made the decision to be with him, mm. at that time, did you feel like you belong yes. with him? and that's the uh -huh. thing. Because you're growing as a person, mm. it, it, that evolves. Yeah. So what you thought was getting it right or where you belonged mm. at 20, today would be hell for you. Mm. So it's like you go to the beat of that. And the, one of the problems with that is that when you make a decision, which is just like the person who even entered that relationship as... It's not who I am now. Mm. So you feel as if it's like you're contradicting yourself, but you're not. Mm. You're growing. You're evolving. And the decisions that you're going to make are going to be reflective of that. And maybe tomorrow, getting it right means something else. But you have to just go to the beat of who you are as opposed to the pressures of what, how things ha have to look like, especially from a societal standard. Okay, but how does that, how does that, I see where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, it feels problematic to my current, the way I think, because I'm just like, how then do you fit in things like commitment, mm. like marriage or having kids or anything, which is a lifelong commitment? Yeah. Because then, I mean, it's like today you feel like you deserve, you belong with your husband. Mm. Then the Lydia in 10 years doesn't. But look, or, at, look at my work. 
I've never had a problem with long-term commitment, even friendships. Mm -hmm. I, I, I keep friends for years. I have friends who I've been with for like 17 years. Mm -hmm. So it's just because it has longevity and commitment mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're going to keep shifting the mm -hmm. sense of belongingness. Mm -hmm. I, and it wasn't like, oh, I woke up one day and I saw, stopped liking this person for no reason. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like it, it wasn't out of like nowhere where this mm -hmm. this came to be with commitments and things like that. There's a part of I don't really feel like doing this. But mm -hmm. even with even with marriage, like how long are you going to be in a situation which, you know, mm -hmm. there's no way you're you're getting the treatment that you need. Yeah. or The person is not showing up for you the way that you it's want true. or both of you are a mess together. Yeah. How long are you going to stay with that? Because it's a lifelong um, commitment. commitment there right. always mm -hmm. has to be a nice harmony between I'm a committed person and mm -hmm. I have follow through and we are following through nonsense. Yeah, you I know? agree. Yeah. There, ha there has I, to be harmony. Yeah. And I guess there's a sense in which um, marriage, I mean, one's hope in marriage is that even who we are when we get married mm. is not who you're going to be in it 10 won't. years. Even and the five, idea, I'm sure yeah, you guys have changed so much. So much. But yeah. the idea is to evolve together. That's and a lot of times I feel like the marriages which don't go far is like one is evolving, but the other one is either trying to limit your evolution mm. or is just not willing to evolve with you. Yeah. So the person is just stuck in the same old ways, stuck in the same same way of yeah. thinking, you know, doesn't want to progress beyond where you are, even financially or yeah. mentally. Yeah. And I think that's what causes a lot of friction then. It is. It's just yeah. like this person is stuck in 2013 and we are now in 2023. So and now you can't, you can't force somebody yeah. else to like evolve with you or to like you now that you're evolved. By the mm. way, that happens as well. It's like, I don't like who you're becoming, mm. even though it's like you are a part of your journey and your expansion mm -hmm. as a human being, because our point of life, I read this in like um, the science of getting rich is to increase life. Yeah. Everything, even plants are always looking to increase yeah. life. So maybe you evolve and your husband's like, this is not now what I, I don't like. I really like you anymore. Oh, now geez. I like, and it's like, whose fault is it? Even if maybe you're evolving together, yeah. maybe he doesn't like your version of evolution what are you going to do or maybe the two versions don't just don't make mesh. sense yeah you know so it's like you th that nice harmony between where i belong i know where i belong and also making sure that i'm not staying committed in mm. situations which are no longer serving, serving you. it's life oh my god yeah that's a big realization too much a bit too much a bit too much no your therapist needs to chill he needs to relax Jeez. okay yeah. maybe let me share my second one before we we finish um the, on on two points oh what is going my on, god girls? literally girls girls hey. yeah yeah, therapy is so much. Like, yeah. God, even this session has felt like a therapy session. It's yeah. just like, and then in therapy, by the way, time goes so quick. Me, I don't even realize something. Like, the first session, I was just like, no, what are we going to talk about for an hour? Literally, I blinked and an hour was yeah. done. And I was like, no, but I was still telling you about yeah, my most dad. Yeah, most of the time, I'm just like, you can't extend. You can't, system. yeah, come on. Just for me, your fave client. Yeah. Just your fave client. Yeah. Wow. Maybe another episode we need to talk about like etiquette, like therapy etiquette yeah. or something, or maybe on our Instagram. So make yeah, sure you're following our Instagram. Therapy, like yeah. finish these points and yeah. also talk about misconceptions, red flags. Exactly. Things like that. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I've, I've, I, I got from therapy or a realization that I made or my therapist made for me mm -hmm. is that I, um, I don't live in the moment. I live in the next moment is where I live. Yeah. So it's difficult for me to enjoy where we are right now because I'm always thinking about like, so who's thinking about how we are going to make the next moment enjoyable kind of thing. Right. So when I'm somewhere, let's say I've just arrived for a shoot, my mind mentally is like at the shoot, yeah, I'm at the shoot, but I'm also thinking about like after the shoot, the thing that we are supposed to be doing next mm -hmm. or whatever. And that actually has been an issue even with my parenting. Sometimes I struggle to like enjoy moments with my kids because I'm already thinking about the, oh yeah, but at six, we need to make sure that they have showered because at seven, we need to be, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. Like I plan it, I plan things in my head mm. because I feel like I'm the I'm the showrunner. Do you understand? Yeah. So I'm the showrunner. So I need to make sure that those other things are happening. Whereas my husband is the complete opposite. He's just like here in the moment. He's not even care. He knows we need to shower at seven. Mm. But somehow showering will get done. Yeah. But right now we're just here. And yeah. for me, I really struggle with that being in the moment. Mm. It's also why like Sometimes you see like now when we were celebrating, I was it 100K subscribers mm -hmm. and you're like, you're so excited. I was just kind of just thinking like, okay, now we've gotten here. We kind of, what's, what's happening oh, next? Yeah. Or like, what are we doing about it? Or now we need to plan an event. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not here in the in this moment, mm -hmm. you know, which is a problem because uh, celebrating or being in that moment is what gives you that feeling of like, yes, I achieved it. Yeah. But I hardly ever sit in that, yes, I achieved it. It's yeah. just kind of like, we need to just keep going and thinking about what's next. Yeah. So she actually gave me homework um, this last session and she's like, for five minutes every hour, I need to just like sit still and be 
in the moment of have you been that doing it? I have not done it even once. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> Because now when I'm talking about this, when I've remembered I was given the homework. So between now and Tuesday next week, I need to actually do it. But yeah. like, yeah, so you just like sit still and just be there. Like when you're in the car, don't like be in the car and you think, oh, I need to call this guy, I need to whatever. Oh, by the way, I hope Nelly has done this. I hope like just oh, be that's hyper vigilance there. Oh, and over I, over functioning. That's that's and actually that's me from uh, the second I wake up, I'm just like, oh, I hope that guy knows that he's supposed to be coming to finish painting. I hope this is a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes it's a mess in my mind. A mess. Yeah. A mess. Yeah. On the one hand, I always understand because sometimes I'm just like, it, I, I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg. Is it like so many responsibilities came? Mm. So then you just assigned yourself these roles because mm. you realize that if you don't do it, things don't work. Mm. Or is it like you had tendencies of over-functioning and then now life gave you like presentations and reasons to, to continue over-functioning. Functioning. Yeah. No, sometimes I feel like now overdo. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like now overdo, honestly. But it's like in my head, I'm like, if I do this faster, then I have more time to do more tasks in this day. Mm. And then that means other tasks can then be scheduled for tomorrow. And why is everything about tasks? Everything is about tasks and doing and things. Yeah. Oh, God. Maybe for me personally, what has changed mm -hmm. um, so much with that way of thinking, um, I think it was... I don't know if it's I don't know if it's this year. I think maybe it's this year because that was one of the intentions mm. to chill the fuck out Just a little chill bit more. The fuck out. That was one of my intentions, and I've and I found that actually, like the reason why you work so hard for luxury is to be able to chill the hell out. If you are over functioning, and it's like, what's the difference between you and the grinder who is basically like fighting for their life to pay rent and hustling? There's no difference. Yeah. It's just the same. <sighs> no. That's how that's how even my 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 social media feels these days. And that's what actually one of the things I was telling her is this like I feel like I'm falling out of love with it because so much of it in the morning is Nancy. No offense, Nancy. It's not your fault. It's yeah. just the work that's there. Yeah. But it's like you need to do this and this and this and send this and make sure you post this and these stories and this. And it's just like this is not how it used to be. You know, yeah. it just used to be like, it's just relaxed and like, oh, I'm happy to be using this product. You mentioned that one. Now it's just kind of like more responsibility. It's so work, work, work. And now, so I, 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 my whole life then just feels that way. It's just like mm -hmm. task and task and fitting this task under this task and this one and this one. And it's like a lot. So that's a journey we've just started walking. Yeah. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on how that goes sure. because it's like, it's I like, I operate like that right now because I feel like I have to, but I would like to, explore the possibility that life doesn't have to be this hectic all the time yeah yeah oh, wow okay well for sure I'm, I'm happy for that walk with you because i i want to see that you remind me so much of my mom mm. in that it's like i grew up I, I grew up seeing my mom being like you see even now yeah she finishes with her clients there she and is yeah. mowing the Cinderella. lawn doing this <laughs> she's gone shopping aggie yeah. aggie's a functioning adult. Yeah. She's gone shopping because her baby, her 29-year-old baby needs to... And also, guys, by the way, mom, don't change because me, I'm coming... No, and no, I need no, a week, no, no, no. I need a week you're, off you're myself. Year old I need baby. a week off to, <laughs> to be careful, mom. Okay. Um, But I just saw that over-functioning, not ever being able to rest ever. And I have really told myself part of breaking generational traumas, one yeah. of that is being an over-functioning woman. I want my kids to say that mom is rested. <sighs> We don't know one woman rested. Do you know one? Who, who knows a rested woman here? Put your hand up. No Is one. Is Michelle Obama resting right mm -hmm. now? No, she, she doesn't, doesn't look she so. Doesn't. Yeah, See, <laughs> she just doesn't look like she's resting. We need to give more imagery of women doing nothing. Just resting. Oh, but God. yeah. That is that's another story. Um, one let me say that I'm working on so I can give update is radical acceptance. And I actually saw Jules posting about this. We are not like that. D just in case you thought this you radical, acceptance. radical acceptance is accepting everything exactly as they are. No, no, they no, are, no, 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 no. no. We are working. No, no you're just and speaking no. out of your ass. <laughs> what do you mean? Radical acceptance. But for me, I'm just like, but why can't I do? Like, but I mean, I can do this. But I, I can okay, change. What do you mean? What, what, when you say accepting everything as it is, what do you mean? Like what? Like for example, a lot of the ways that we we see things is about like we need to improve things right mm -hmm. i need to improve this i need to improve my business i need to improve how i feel about myself all of these things mm -hmm. but she says that a lot of that constant working on something going for something always is that it's like it's a never-ending chasing something else but what that but needs to life. do huh? 
that's the life we've chosen. No. What it's li listen, <laughs> but what we need to balance that with is being able to sit in things as they are so that you don't feel like you're always in this like work Bob the Builder energy towards changing stuff. You, you're never, this being the present moment, how, why am I enjoying this when there's something else to do? How? There's something to improve. Okay, you're happy that you have 100 episodes. So, so now you think you've achieved radical acceptance. Okay, I feel like I want, whoa. No, that's too radical. That's too much. I, I, that's too Even much. me, when, first of all, the word radical already I don't like. Yeah. Like I don't want to. Radical okay. acceptance being still in this because she says if you, um, if you're fighting yourself, if you're fighting um, for like, let's say a dream. Let's say I want to, what, what, can, what example can I give? What are we even talking about when she said this? This, I'm, 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 I'm feeling like, okay, what is, the, what is the line between that radical acceptance and mediocrity? But what she said is that there's a balance between the two. Mm. She's like, it's being able to, like, for example, let's even say you're, you're going through a hard time mm. with, like, in your marriage. It's, like, terrible, right? Mm. And the frustration of the fact that this needs to change and all of these things, that adds an extra layer of the pain of what you're experiencing as opposed to being like, this is what I'm experiencing. Oh my God. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, so so now let's say my man and I, let's say had a tiff this morning, mm -hmm. which we did. Oh. So now <laughs> instead of spending the whole day thinking about like, but we need to talk about this, we need to fix this. I just be like, we had a tiff. We had a tiff because guess what? In this moment, you're ruining this one because you can't do anything about it right now. If you need to talk about it, you will talk about it then. But radical acceptance is like, we had a tiff. Without having the story of we are going this to means, end, yes, this is this terrible. Is what does this mean about it's our relationship? Just like we it's had just a tiff. A, we had a tiff. Okay, no, that's life changing. Oh my! Nothing needs to be done. <laughs> Nothing needs to be done. No, 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 no. You no. know? Oh God! Where did we learn about like we always have to be doing things? Because we saw other people over functioning. So then, of course, that's how we see that that's what how things need to need, need to be like. Yeah. Okay, this is what we were um we were talking about. So we were going about um, how I, what I want for my life, what I want for my love life. And I had said, you know, I always do things in schedules. Why? We're not going into Let's that. Not, anyway, and we were discussing um, how it's like, I know that I'm single, mm -hmm. right? I know that I'm single. I know that I'm single at 32. I know that. Mm -hmm. But really, it's like, it's not that I know. It's like, it's like I'm passing this stage. Yeah. It's like, it's, 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 it's just for now. Yeah, yeah just, we're just, just on the way. But she's just like, but you're you're always planning. You're always in that future. It's, so mm. for you, it's just like this is a bus stop. Like mm. obviously, you don't live here. Going, I I don't live here. <laughs> this is not my house. It's just that it's it's, it's, a, it's a bus stop. And to be and, and to be honest, a lot of times it removes away from being still in your moment, mm. right? Being able to see what lessons you need to take in in this moment. And despite the fact that I feel like I do that, I realize that in truth, it's like I'm only enjoying it because. We are you moving know. along. Yeah, and you we're know a man along. is on it's the like way. Here, yeah. You know, whereas being able to just be like, this is this where is I am. It. This is where I live. This is it. This is so where I live. that basically is similar to what I said, except mine was yeah. like smaller scale of like the day to day yeah. things. That one is like in the life, life to life. life things. Just being here. You know, you are, you're planning your 18th anniversary. You haven't reached whatever. And what ends up happening is that you're not even focused on enriching here mm. which is the thing that gets you to there because you're so busy being there yeah. oh my hey, let me deal with these ones first so let me deal it's with it in the day to day radical acceptance is something which is like we are working on and you know especially things that you don't necessarily want yeah. or are happy with or you you enjoy it's just like mm. why would i yeah. accept why why but the truth yeah. is lack of radical acceptance is fighting life that's it because it's yeah. Life. And, the, and sometimes happening. you just need to just sit in that thing that has happened and then just be there. Yeah, just be here. God, this is an example of one of those things which probably you're experiencing in your life, but because you've not been to therapy, you don't even know that it's something that you, that's a tool that can actually help you be able to accept yeah. like things which are happening in your life at that point. Yeah, oh, 100%. Guys, I'm, we're, we've, we've said this many <laughs> Many, many times, but you don't, um, when you, when you're thinking about your life, you think it's running functionally and you're mm. doing well because nothing has fallen apart. But that's just like saying my health is perfectly fine because I'm not sick. Well, no, 
It's like you probably need to take care of it better. You could improve it better. Mm. You could work out. You could eat better. You could see a doctor once in a while. Mm. You could go to the Cairo. There are all of these things and all of these tools that we have the privilege of having mm. as those who are like in the age of information. So let's utilize um, some of these tools. Let's utilize them yeah. um, and, and actually access some of these services. Mm. If, as, as we are saying, you want somebody who you can message when things are happening so you can get the advice in then. the heat and of like the moment most, most yeah. places don't do that yeah. you have to wait for your session or something like that if you want that kind of interaction mm -hmm. if you want to align with a therapist who you know is specific to you they know you they understand the kind of issues that you are going through specific to just you definitely check out better help and make sure that you use the link below to get 10 percent off absolutely better help has helped over Four million, million people. people. Why not you? Over four million people. Their database has a ton of different experts yeah. and you will definitely find one who aligns with you. It might not be the first one, might mm. not be the second one, mm. but you'll definitely find one yeah. because it's, it, I, honestly, it's one of those really difficult things. In this country, may feel like there's some people who say that they're therapists and counselors and mm. it's like, wait, what's, what's your, how is your recommendation saying <laughs> that women should not do this or men should not do this? Or like, you know, it's a hundred percent just like you should just pray. No, yeah. I, we, you, we need you to be connected to like a therapist who actually knows what they are saying. Mm. Because also if someone has a bad experience with therapy, they might think that that's how therapy just no. is. Yeah. So we are interested in you getting the best therapy that you possibly can yeah. and not necessarily whether it's it's a mental health issue like mm -hmm. depression or anxiety that you need help with or it's just managing everyday life mm -hmm. please do give better help um a try click the link in the description and you will get the help that you deserve you definitely will we're definitely going yeah. to do another episode um on therapy because mm -hmm. we've said two points exactly um, <laughs> and so definitely join us guys and part of all of this like improving and growing and mm. being better people and all of these things is just getting the people who can help us do that mm. because tmi and especially those ones who are saying lidia is your therapist please. stop no 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 stop no, no. singing that stop singing that because when you see your therapist in the club shaking her booty exactly. now now, <laughs> now now it's an issue <laughs> Now it's that an is issue. A now it's a problem. It, please. Yeah. Um, so when, as in this journey of life, what can we do to support ourselves mm -hmm. to do better mm -hmm. as we um, as we go on, or even not to do better, yeah. to radically accept. To radically just accept that we're doing badly. Even that is okay. I think so. <laughs> I accept that I'm terrible. I accept that yeah. I'm terrible. What can we Jeez, do, guys? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, please don't leave without leaving a comment. We just want to know: Are you in therapy? Have you ever considered it? Have you ever had a positive experience, a bad experience? Have you struggled to find a therapist? let us know in the comments um, or you can DM us on Instagram TMI Podcast KE and we would just like to have a chat about um, your therapy situation but until next time thank you for watching see ya